Juice's World Party Time! Excellent! Hello, and welcome to this week's riveting episode of Juice's World. I'm the Juice. Today we'll be tying a, uh, um, yeah, I don't know, a black and yellow bugger variant. Call it what you like, I don't know, but it looks like it'll catch fish. I've never actually fished this particular bug, but, uh, you know, I can say with a 78% degree of certainty, this will get it done for you folks, so uh, stay tuned. So once again, we're using Vivas thread. This is 140, uh, which I think is probably the best streamer thread on the market. Uh, you might disagree, but hey, some opinions are backed by fact and others are, well, not backed by fact. So we're going to start out with a little piece of uh, yellow woolly bugger marabou. I like the way it makes a tail. It kind of poofs a little bit more, has a better presence in the water. And for these little bugs, it looks pretty damn good. So this is a size 6, yeah, 6, B10S, uh, sure to punch a big hole in every trout you catch his mouth. Hopefully right through the sinus and they bleed out so you don't have to fight them too long. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a, that's a joke. <laughs> I can already hear the angry comments online. Are you serious? Did he just say that? So now we're going to tie in kind of a brown olive feather for your over feather. And for a bead today, I have a black ruby uh, tungsten bead from Hairline. Uh, is the color black ruby critical? Absolutely. Not even. But the tungsten bead is critical. Uh, they are a lot heavier. I like the way that you can suck materials in behind a bead. And these new colored beads from Hairline are pretty sweet. We're just going to even that out, give ourselves a nice even body here. Use as much thread as you want. This isn't a dry fly. Now we're going to tie in a little bit of speckled flashaboo. This is kind of the copper color. Whoops, it's out of focus. There we go. Ooh, looks nice. Looks even better in the water. Um, We'll take three or four strands. You can always cut it out. Some days you don't need much flash. And the front half of this fly does have a little bit of flash in it. So the way to do this is, is to grab the midpoint of your flashaboo. And we're going to just take our thread and we're going to basically grab the middle of it like that. And we're going to anchor it on one side with two wraps and we're going to jump over and as we jump we're going to make a few wraps here we're going to come around now we're going to grab both ends make sure they're even because the fish definitely care and we're going to secure that end we're going to snip it just about in line with our marabou get that off of my fingers there and like I said, you can always cut it out if it's too much flash. We're going to take ice stub in olive brown. Use the end of my scissors to pull it out of my corner cut. There's my corner cut. My scissor just went right inside and did that. We're going to grab just a little wisp of it because we're actually going to make a dubbing noodle. So grab just a very sparse amount and we're going to roll it tight to the thread and we'll do this process a couple of times but it's going to provide a more durable bug and before we wrap that since this is a streamer and we're going to be doing a little bit of man fishing and this bug's bound to get beat up or hang from a tree we're going to put a little bit of zappa gap on it and we're just going to lightly coat our body in zappa gap that's going to anchor this ice stub in there nice and tight really it won't even have much of a presence in the fly but if you're gonna tie it in tie it in to stay in right so we'll keep making little dubbing noodles making a relatively even body one last little pinch I think is all it's gonna take get behind that bead I've left myself, oh, 
I don't know, a little bit of distance there. And now we're going to take two little pieces of polar reflector flash. Here I have the yellow and the copper brown in this hand right here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to fold our reflector flash. We're going to take about a, an inch to two inch segment and we're going to kind of get everything pulled together like that. Get our tips relatively aligned. And we're going to cut it right off the braid because the braid makes way too much bulk. And we're going to set that aside. We're just going to set that on the pedestal of the vise or the table or whatever's convenient. And we're going to repeat it with the yellow. I'm going to take that yellow piece of polar flash here. See how we've got all our tips aligned. And now we're going to just cut it right off the braid. And we're going to set that directly on top of our brown copper polar flash. So now you've got a, or reflector flash, excuse me. So now you've got a wad of reflector flash cut off the hank. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our first dubbing loop. We're going to use two dub loops in this fly to create kind of a nice muted but flashy shoulder, which I think looks great in the water. And so now we're going to take that whole assemblance of flash right here. We're going to slide it in the loop. And this is where you can play with it. Um, if you want more of a prop, you can run it, say, 60-40. I'm going to run it, what's that, maybe, I don't know, 20-80, something like that. So it's more of a hackle rather than a prop. And once it's actually in your loop, you can make it as sparse as you want in the loop. It doesn't really matter because we're going to wrap it all on top of each other. And then we're going to spin it. I've got a nice heavy OPST dubbing spinner here. Yes, it's the only way to do these. No, the Loon one doesn't work worth shit. And once we get it all nice and tight, we're going to take our handy little pick comb here. And we're going to pick out everything until you can see, you can see in there, the thread. And we're going to take this nice hackle, and since I'm nervous, my hands are nice and sweaty, so I'm able to have a little bit of moisture to comb this hackle back, and we're going to wrap our hackle now, our flash hackle. And we're going to make our wraps basically right on top of each other, and we're going to get right up behind that bead. Just keep wrapping in there. Lots of tension on those wraps. And we're going to tie it off. Good firm wraps. All right, we're going to snip. And when you snip, you can actually leave a little bit of that dub loop out. So you don't have to snip it tight to the bead. Now we're going to make our final dub loop here. And this is when we're going to tie in our marabou hackle. Now marabou is a great material, but it lacks in durability. So when you can put it into a dub loop, you can make it a little bit more durable. So we're going to try and make just a little bit of space there behind that bead. So what I've done is I've taken a woolly bugger marabou feather, and for demonstration purposes I've taken the tip and I've cut the butt of the feather off so you get those nice, even, what actually looks like a hackle on the stem. And so what you're going to do is you're going to comb out what's going to be your hackle, get kind of your, your tips aligned, so to say, and we're going to put it in our dub loop. And once it's in there, we're going to take our dubbing spinner here. And we're going to adjust our feather to length. Now this is totally up to you. The longer it is, the more it's going to mute the flash. The shorter it is, the less it'll mute the flash. And a little bit of wax makes this process slightly easier. But once you're happy with it, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to work right up the stem.
to get your hackle. And good scissors are absolutely critical to be successful in this step. If you've got dull scissors or scissors that don't do what they're supposed to do and that's cut, you're going to screw it up, you're going to pull out feathers and it's going to end up looking pretty bad. So that's relatively even. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a good spin. We're going to spin that hackle tight. And now we're going to brush it out really good. I've got my overpriced pet comb that fits on my finger here available through MFC. And I'm going to get all those feathers, all those to kind of present in the hackle. And we're going to comb that back. I'm going to make a few wraps here, right behind the bead. And tie them off. Right behind the bead. Just make sure that's getting tied off there. We're going to snip the loop. A little bit of picking there to kind of get everything nice and smoothed out, represented in case something got wrapped over. And now we'll whip finish. Tell me that won't get eight. And there it is. So what do you call on that fly again, Juice? God, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't they named it yet. Know. The people want to know. They want to, Instagram wants to know. The, the world of Instagram wants to know what I'm going to call it. Uh, should, do I name it after an ex-girlfriend, a deceased dog, uh, a rap star? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's it's black and yellow, sort of. I guess we could call it the uh, the Wiz Khalifa. I'm I'm just not sure. What's your input, people of Instagram? What do you want it to be called? But good looking bug. I think it'll get a. Eat me.